<laughs> oh yeah, and by the way, Ballers just started again too, yes. which is uh, it, which is awesome. Wait, so, is season three? This season is. Four. It's good. It's, I think it's, it could be three. three. I think it's three. Yeah, yeah. three. Yeah. Now that voice you hear in the background, ladies and gentlemen, mm-hmm. uh, our very special guest, and people are like, "Who's that?" Don't worry, no one knows except the students. Joe Juris, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> who is who has come in here uh, apparently. No one told me you were the size of a newt bowl. Yeah, I mean, no yeah, the, the microphone—that's the—that's the tallest. <laughs> that's even more than than uh, Leo, Leo Routens. Yeah, it's up there. I don't know if he's as tall as Leo. How tall are you? Yeah, I'm six six. I think Leo's six eight, isn't yeah, he? Yeah. 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 So second. Not tall. that you know. Okay, that was second. weird. <laughs> okay, so, uh, um, but look, thank you so much. And you, uh, Joe is uh, also uh, a great supporter of ours, a good friend of uh, Warren Sock. You absolutely. A- as you're wearing the uh, Topico uh, Rangers, that's right. I'm wearing the colors today. Yep, yeah, absolutely. So, so where are you a principal? Where, where? Uh, Lumen Christie Elementary School in uh, in Milton. In Milton. Yeah, spent 23 years in secondary, and then went to elementary uh, about four years ago. So. So, the tallest person in kindergarten. <laughs> Kids love me. I can touch the ceiling. <laughs> I was going to say. Touch with my left hand. They don't even know. <laughs> it's like they're terrified when uh, Principal Juris comes in there. <laughs> uh, you know, it's, but it's, look, I'm, I'm from a, a family of teachers and coaches, all of them. So I've lived my whole life, as, as I continue to do, surrounded by, by teachers. I think it's the, the most important job. I think it is the most misunderstood vocation, I think, when you talk to people about what they think it is. And I always say the same thing. If you're criticizing your grade three or four teacher, and the last time you were in a classroom of those in grade three or four was when you (laughs) were in grade three or four, you don't know what you're talking about. You just don't. Leave it to the professionals. They're really good at what they do. And I think the pressure, uh, not unlike uh, when we talk about sports and how coaches and general managers have to deal with this generation that wants to go to a phone first, that wants to have texting rather than a conversation. Um, there are challenges that way, which means you've got to kind of reinvent approach, I would say. Do you find, now not so much a massive difference between uh, high school and elementary, because obviously there's there's an obvious, obvious one, mm-hmm. but do you think even the time that you spent in high school, do you see that the social media aspect of, of millennials, if you want to call them that way, has really made it, more difficult to 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 get across teaching or or or, or civility in teaching manners and respect. How, what has that influence been for you from your standpoint? Yeah, I th- you know I think the, the most important thing anything is talking to people face to face on the phone, right? Everything you lose tone, emails and texts. Yep. I'll get I'll get a text, you know. You know, ten minutes ago, my daughter was pushed by Johnny on the kindergarten playground. <laughs> Yeah, right. <laughs> like, like that stuff just didn't happen no, before, no. right? <laughs> so I, I maintain with it. even when I was teaching, I said, you know, even I tell my teachers, like, get on the phone. You know, notes are nice, texts are nice, but give, you know, even, I coach uh, elementary sports, I coach uh, girls softball, still hockey, the twenty-four hour rule, eh? Give it a little bit of time, but you know, it wasn't. I was two thousand and eight. There was a, f- a fight broke out. I was a VP, and uh, somebody brought in the BlackBerry tape of it and i'm looking at the fight the student brought it in no, is this I, high school or is the this is high school, school now this is high school and i'm looking i go the first thing that comes to me is in the fact the fight i'm going man this quality is really <laughs> good on this phone this is this is better than the digital films we use to, to, to film our football games eh so and that's only 10 years yeah, ago yeah so i think you know i think it, the most important thing is is talking to people face to face you get rid of the tone you get rid of the you know and give it a little bit of time but it certainly it certainly has made it more difficult now that's in communication with the parents but what about the way in which children and quite frankly if you're <laughs> what we're talking about if you're under 18 i you're Hey, there are children who are 40, but but at this point, I'm talking about, you know, the way in which they interact with each other or interact with their teacher, when the first uh, thing that they think of maybe isn't even playing, Joe, like playing outside. It's it's a video game. It's 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 being on that phone. It's. It's all those things that social media, I think, sometimes make me nervous when it comes to, for instance, some of the problems you see. And I, I used to say south of the border, but you you, you got to realize you can't say that anymore, where you see sort of disenfranchised young people, the guns coming into the schools, that ticking time bomb, and those that were either bullied or, again, felt strained from their peers – I don't know if social media has made that any better. In fact, if anything, I think it's made it worse. Oh, they'll, they'll play Fortnite till four o'clock in the morning, and then be late for school. 
I, it's you know what? It's a different world. They you know I have three three teenage daughters, and even we're at we're at the keg last night, and all five of us are on our we're all there talking together, but all five of us are checking because so you know true. And there's no time off from your friends. Like, you know, if you don't respond within three minutes, even with us, we don't, we're like, what's going on? Like, you know, you sometimes I, you know, I'm working today. I'm checking my email today. I got like six emails between getting off the uh, subway at Union and, and walking to here. So yeah. it's just, there's no time off and there's no, you know, I was listening to this. There's just, people just don't interact anymore. Right. It's, everything's on through the phone. So it's definitely, uh, you know, it's causing some problems. I think the whole school system almost is ready to be blown up. When you take a look at what we, you know, I mean, we teach Shakespeare, but we don't teach coding. It's, you know, it's, it's the world is just evolved. We're evolving yeah. at a huge, but, you know, we have buildings and systems and books in our building that we need to use still, right? So I think we use stuff just because we have it, not so much because it's actually the best thing to do. I could totally see that sort of thing changing as as we go on and you know as I have a 5 and 2 year old so their their education is going to be a lot different than what I got but one thing that I hope never changes is the sport aspect and you have a pretty good sports background. So it's is is it baseball number 1 for you? Is it football number 1 for you? How does it rank in the standings of what you've coached, what you love uh, and kind of put it all together because I I I I sense that this is a massively sports oriented person and family and that's probably why you don't mind the show either well I'm, I'm not, not so much a family i'm pretty much an outcast yeah. i go really yes right? i go to the garage if i uh one of my daughters is a big uh a big blue jays fan but uh uh for me it would probably be baseball was my best sport but i did i went to saint of x i played football for four years there but i'm canadian so i played uh i played gthl for right up until uh minor midget mississauga right. north stars we won two carnation cups so if I could do anything, I'd be a hockey and first certainly a Leaf guy. I know you have your, yeah. <laughs> I know you're a little not too keen on our defense, but you know we're going to score 19 goals, right, Russell? Do we don't need, uh, yeah, right, we don't on. need, uh, right. we don't need any defense. <laughs> so yeah, my, my uncle went to Simon Fraser University back in the 70s. That's you know I, I know like met guys like Rick House, and Dan Farone, yeah. organization. So yeah. grew up all the way through that, wanting to play football. But uh, and yeah, because if you're six six and your size, I'm a football coach. I need you. I need you to play. You're probably going to play on both sides. Did you play both on both sides of the ball? Well, on both no, sides I was of the a line? quarterback. Right? Oh, he's a quarterback. Yeah. Oh, so okay. I didn't know. I, I pictured more of a tight end. I, well, that, that's uh, what I would have thought. Yeah. But uh, I, so at six six, I tell my uh, I tell my kids uh, I never when I coach that I never really played football because I was a quarterback. I wore the red jersey right and ran around. So <laughs> 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 you know, I'd be sore Sunday. Those guys would be yeah. sore every day of the week. You know. <laughs> now, so you're a Toronto boy, uh, born and raised, obviously. Well, at Mississauga, yeah, yeah. Etobicoke, went to De La Salle. You went to De La Salle? Absolutely, yes. Uh, with uh, Jerry, big Mr. D, you know, Jerry D. Yeah, of course. Same, same grade, right? You Correct. know, I, I, when I talk about uh, the Oaklands, right, yeah. the De La Salle Oaklands, and uh, obviously there was a, a St. Mike's guy, and I said, can can you tell me what your feelings on the gym at De La Salle? <laughs> In his face. Oh, it was a beauty, stuff. wasn't it? He, huh? He, he hated it. He goes, that stupid place. It that was a stupid box. gym. I painted that gym. <laughs> you did? <laughs> well, it was the Boys Athletic Association, right? We oh. were, there were there were no girls. Because to... that was built in about, <laughs> so, what, 1812? Oh, I don't know well, when that, that was old. It, it was the 50th anniversary when I was there in 82. <laughs> so right. it started in 32. It started on Bond Street, right? But, uh, oh, <laughs> yeah, you know, my, then my, my nephew actually went to... St. Mike's, I call them a, a hoikity joiker, right? <laughs> They're stupid cheers and all, but uh, definitely no love lost between uh, St. Mike's and De La Salle. Now, how do you uh, so War, uh, Warren Saki? How do we how do we know this relationship? How does uh, did you play ball with him? Well, Warren started with ball, yeah. Yeah. So Greg O'Halloran went to De La Salle with me. So uh, Greg and Warren are good buddies, and they played in High Park, and then they moved to Etobicoke. I say Tobacco with the K. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> so eighty I met Warren in eighty six. He was playing he had played and then he went uh, he was off at Wake Forest, then he came back, he played in Andrew County. But we played junior and then when so when Sluggo came back. Yeah, by the way, people yeah. have to get used to the fact they're probably gonna use the word sluggo in this conversation. Yeah, sluggo. Warren is sluggo, he could just hit. So when he came back from the pros, he came back, Greg came back from Taiwan. And uh, we played together for about three years before I, I finally retired. Warren played about three or four more years. Yeah. 
So, so Sluggo was part of your all nickname team that you could tell us, right? Well, the, the Tobacoke uh, <laughs> Rangers are just full of nicknames. You right? want to go through the roster? Well, we got the general playing first. We got Dave <laughs> Metzmilski playing first in DH, and we got Frankie Scooby Doo McIntyre. <laughs> We've got uh, Rob Pigpen Pino, who's oh. now a uh, doctor. Well, uh, that's, we that's have, a nickname. We have Kenny Forshee, the yeah. world's most dangerous yeah. uh, third baseman. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, we got Valen We had Banger. We got yeah. Irish. Yeah. Uh, you know, Whitey was Whitey. Yeah, yeah Whitey was Whitey. Yeah, yeah. we've you talked know, about him many Bill times. Bill is Bounce. Show. Yeah. Uh, Johnny, uh, l- l- wrong term, Lamore. What about Nifty <laughs> Ned? You, can, uh, do, you well, can do a pretty well, good impression of Nifty Ned, uh, I understand. It's, it's hard to do a Nifty Ned impersonation <laughs> without dropping 19 <laughs> F-bombs. <laughs> <laughs> the first game I ever played for Nifty Ned, uh, and Greg brought me out, and uh, we're playing at Legion Field in Oshawa. You ever been in the... Yeah, of course, you know, exactly be- You know, yeah. beautiful field yeah. all, and... Uh, Terry O'Don had been playing there forever, and he went and uh, and bunted, and Nifty just screamed, "What the f are you doing? Get your f and g d ass over here right now!" <laughs> Terry was a lefty; he's walking down, smiling. I'm looking around, going, "What's going?" On? There's like grandparents around, like, and he's dropping them, right? Because uh, hey, so Nifty was always the uh, no bunting; we were never allowed. We hit in a tobacco coat because uh, yeah. bunting was for girls. Yeah. <laughs> I love so it. that oh. was that's a nifty line, that's, not my line. Yeah. Uh, but he, uh, oh, he was a beauty. See, that's see if if if, if I'm sitting there at the uh, you know uh, Sunnybrook, yeah. and and they say by the way your your doctor's coming in, uh, and and I say does he have a nickname? They said yeah, it's Nifty. That wouldn't bother me. No. But if they say what's my doctor's nickname? It's Pigpen. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Rob, Rob Pino, great player, but he, you know, he just got dirty all the time. He'd be sliding into, he'd slide and dive wherever he could, right? And he'd be out there too. He'd be going, JJ, look at that. Isn't that sky beautiful out there? You know, and Rob could play. Rob was, uh, I think he's in the McMaster Hall of Fame for baseball. Is that right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Is that yeah. Right? Was he part of that? Uh, he was part of that. That team in 99 that went to New Brunswick? Yeah, that 99 yeah. team in New Brunswick. It was just like, you know, that's the thing that, you know, you spoke about it. That's how we got hooked up. You see the 18 here. Yeah. Whitey just passed away in January. Yeah. Right. But it was like three generations of of guys. The team that, that Nifty started in senior. And Nifty took a little bit of flack because they started in 78. And then we came up around 90 and he kicked all those old guys off and said we've got a whole team coming up yeah right yeah it's time for you guys to retire so but you know those guys get along well with us now and even the team playing uh i just saw a tweet now they uh joey you know joey Votto took a yes. lot a little bit of flack <laughs> just but, a tad uh, yeah but uh the one thing joey just joey bought uh got them shirts the senior team we were looking we were talking about getting the senior team shirt because we saw they didn't look that good mm. at the funeral and we talked about maybe getting our team together and just donating some money to get them shirts, even though they are men. And then reached out to Joey, and he used some part of his credit at Rawlings, actually, to help pay for that. But he just said he wanted people to do stuff to pay back. So that senior team actually hooked up with the Special Olympics team. Awesome. And it told oh, go to do good. some stuff. Awesome. So I'll send that tweet out uh, later after the show. So okay. that's all kind yeah. of inspired by, you know, that's, you know, through Joey as well, I know. And Joey's, Joey's taking great care of Nifty. When uh, he flew him, he's flown him out all over the place. When the, when the World Baseball Classic was here, about 96 in the Sky Dome or wherever, the, yep. you know, he, he flew him in and he set him up in the hotel. So Joey's always taking care of Bobby, which is, which is really nice. Well, it's interesting in, in the baseball world where obviously uh, there's been an affinity to, to play ba- baseball in this country. But it seemed like, I don't know, maybe 20, 25 years ago, Maybe, maybe a little bit longer. All of a sudden, not only were baseball players being produced in this country, but they were becoming some of the best that we'd seen in major leagues. Uh, a lot of it, you know, out in uh, the, 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 BC. Uh, in yeah. BC. What, what is the reason for Why did all of a sudden did we see not just Canadians just making it? Because there was a time where I just threw out the name, you know, Fergie Jenkins, and that's kind of, it kind of stopped there. It started and stopped. But, Terry, Terry Poole. Yeah, so so what happened? So so why all of a sudden did we get better coaching? Was there uh, an influence? Like why why are we seeing uh, you know a name like Joey Votto do what he does? And I think too some of the guys it's hard. To, I think they started to figure out that you know you come to Canada you can get some pretty good players. So it was an untapped. And I think you know guys like Howie Burney, uh, Alfie, Alfie Payne in East York, uh, Rick Flurry in Lee Side. Um, you know, obviously Nifty, they got, you know, had connections and they built things up, you know, like, 
And then once you start seeing people going down and they're good students, good kids, you know, everybody likes that hockey mentality, right? Sure. Uh, well, Corey Koski also had a big run there for a while. I played with Corey. Yeah. yeah. Oh, did you? Yeah. yeah. The stadium that we played out of, which uh, he was a former Elmwood Giant, is now named, you know, Corey Koski Park. So, yeah, Corey's, Corey and I are exact you know, same age. Rob and Rich came out of uh, East York, right? Rob Butler. Rob's yep. a couple years younger than I am, but I played some junior baseball with Rob, too. Good That's guys, right. so... And, and then BC, I guess BC's just got a little better climate, right? They can play a little longer. I guess you get that through. Yeah, and they play a lot against the American teams that are just because they're close. The they're so close to the border. Exactly. Just like, just like. Uh, and so Simon are we, Fraser. though. Simon yeah. Fraser, yeah. Well, Simon, you know, Simon With Fraser's, you know, program. their football program still plays. That's right. I think they're uh, they've got a 33 game losing streak right now, though. Yeah, they may want to rethink uh, <laughs> think that. Well, <laughs> they 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 came into the CIS for about four years about six seven years ago and then they went back right, right. so because it's like a div, div three i want to say or something no that div they're two in. they're two is it div two yeah and yeah, they're two well you know but they were the fact maybe, right? maybe Div three's not a bad idea <laughs> <laughs> well right trying to set a record hey record's a record yeah, well, well. right I, I think i got the i think i'm cis record holder for most tackles by a quarterback See, you take the take the record you got. <laughs> huh? right. a lot of picks, a lot of, well, a lot of confusion with the jerseys. So Johnny Manziel's going, yeah, but at least I wasn't Joe Juris. That's right. Well, Get off my back. I'll trade. Yeah. I'll trade with Johnny. Yeah. Poor Johnny. Yeah. I, I was just telling you. I read that uh, online, just coming in here, that doesn't look like the Owls are going to pick up uh, Carter. Carter. Yeah. I don't know who. I don't know. What is that? Hey, That's look, surprising. I get it. Look, I, we, we talked about it the other day. We get that as a handful. I mean, you're you're getting a guy that does have some issues, but at this point, it's really hard to turn like sometimes as some coaches will tell you you can't replace talent no. and at, at the professional level they're not all great guys they're not all they're not all the the people that you want them to be but at some point just win baby just win and i think that's a mistake now the fact that you uh you brought up uh, i want to play something and this is still where people say you know too bad for johnny i guess it's all over i'm not of that camp i saw i saw an improvement in this guy who's playing for a very bad team actually make things happen and i'm not really looking at necessarily as still this translation into an nfl career i'm just look, can, can he have a cfl career i mean can he play in, in that league are americans still watching this is courtesy and property of tmz and warner brothers a tmz sports kurt warner's coming out of a coming to an airport and you know how tmz is <laughs> you, the, you come out from taking a dump boom the tmz they're there are you using a lot of uh, toilet paper? Was there enough in there for you? Are you a three-way guy? Like, they just, they, they ask so many questions. You just don't know what's coming. Kurt Warner comes out, and, and once again, TMZ Sports, ask him a question about Johnny Manziel. When you listen to his answer, <clears throat> there's an indication that, guess what? Not only are they aware of it, they're watching on a week-by-week -week basis. Once again, property of TMZ Sports and Warner Brothers. Hey, uh, Johnny Manziel, a lot of people are saying he won't be able to make the NFL again after throwing four interceptions, first game back CFL. How do you feel about that? You think he's still got a chance? I threw four interceptions in the arena <laughs> football and four interceptions in Europe. I mean, it happens, and he's just getting back on the field, so I don't think this this, this means he can't play. It, it just means he's a bit rusty, though, but he, like, he's still got it in him, potentially? Yeah, I mean, I think the thing is he's always trying to make plays. Yeah. And you saw that last week is that he's running around, he's making some plays. Some he's a little bit off. And at this level, when you're a little bit off, yeah. it turns into an interception. But, again, you just got to hone it in. He's got to continue to improve. But, again, I, I don't believe this means he can't play in the NFL. But he's still got to improve. I, I, I like this, though. Like, uh, this is a different opinion I hadn't heard, that those interceptions means that he's, like, he's going for it. And he's, like... He's, he's flexing his... And that's always what makes, John, makes Johnny Johnny, is that he's not afraid to take chances. He's not afraid to try to make plays. Right. And, and again, that's what makes great quarterbacks great. But you got to be judicial with it. Yeah. And you got to make sure you're making more plays than mistakes. So he's just, yeah, he's got to hone his skills and get down to, like, two interceptions doing the same stuff, then zero. You know what well, I mean? Let's get like, down to zero interceptions <laughs> yeah. and make a whole bunch of plays. Yeah. And that's how he's going to make his way back. Interesting. Once again, property of TMZ Sports and Warner Brothers. Signing a lot of autographs, too, during that uh, interview, eh? But, he wouldn't but, put down that pen. But here's what I think is interesting. They start talking about Johnny Manziel. And he said, well, as you saw last week, he's watching. Sure he is. They're watching. Now, he more than almost any other guy I can think of, because he's played in every single league 
that ever existed that decided they were going to play football. It, I'm amazed he didn't play in Canada. Yeah. Like, I am really amazed. Used to, used to bag groceries, right. He was bagging too. groceries yeah. instead, yeah. 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 You know, so, so but but I, I look at that and I think, okay, as much as people want to brush it off, there is still a pulse there. And if he continues to play and can, and improve the way that he is, this is going to be very interesting. Once again, I'll say it, I, I think he should, should have been an Argo, but – uh, we don't know what was offered. It won't went the other way. But I think uh, you're looking at a Toronto Argonaut uh, market that just, you know, it's it, it's hard and it's it's almost hurtful for those of us who used to go to, you know, Exhibition Stadium and 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 sit amongst uh, 45, 50 thousand people for a regular season game. Streetcars were packed. The you knew the Don Valley. Well, you know there was a game that night because it was packed. You saw all the go trains coming in, and they would just kill for something like that now. And I think even if they play good football, which they do, they got a good defense. Even if Ricky Ray never got hurt, they go eighteen and zero. I don't know if people in this in this city give a crap about football. I, and I don't. I don't think uh, Hamilton's trading Manziel to well, Toronto. I just. I just. You know. I, you know. But I think even there. before it, with the, the neg rights, that's when I. That's when I would have got in there. But I just think that they thought he was going to be a poison apple. And I think, as I said, just with the Devon Carter, sometimes you've got to take that talent. It's professional football. They don't have to be the nicest guys. Well, and they do. And Jones is pretty good with those guys. He has a lot of reclamation projects there. You know, I, I saw Bill Cower speak once, and he was talking about uh, toler, toler, tolerating production. He said, so long as you're producing more than I have to tolerate, we don't have a problem. He was talking about Joey Porter. <laughs> right, he right. Said, Joey yeah. Porter used to melt off and said, I'm going to get 13, sack, or 13 tackles and four sacks. And then he'd go out and he'd get 15 tackles and five sacks he'd go you know joe i wish you'd shut up a little bit but he said <laughs> hey he came out there and he you know he made plays so, so. True. Yeah. right and, and obviously carter i don't know and then he did all the great stuff i know the fans loved him you know he came here to toronto and he bought them all those uh, tickets right to go to the movie he said come on out we're gonna watch a movie but who's your favorite athlete of all time who's your favorite uh, athlete marino Dan Marino. Dan Marino. Dan Marino. Yeah, absolutely. Interesting. Yeah, well, I know you're a Marino guy. I've heard you talk yeah. a little no, bit Dan about Marino him. Yeah, no, Dan Marino is, uh, he's, you know, when people say, yeah. do you have to win a Super Bowl to be in the Hall of Fame? Uh, no. 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 Yeah, so I'm a big, when, when I was uh, five, I got a Larry Zonka shirt, so that was pretty much made me a Dolphin fan. And then I had friends, we used to spend our summers in Pittsburgh playing baseball, so I got a lot of friends in Pittsburgh, and he played in Pitt and That's right. came through, and then he just had that, you know, 83, 84, it was just lights out, so... Absolutely. There's something about the water in Pennsylvania when it comes to quarterbacks. Yeah. Namath, Kelly, <laughs> Montana. Like, they come out of there like they. I mean, it's just it's it's a, a, a depressed area at times. They go through economic depression. Yet every once in a while, here comes some kid out of there who throws the ball a mile. And uh, it, 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 you know, funny for for a state like people always assume it'd be a, a Texas or a Florida or a California. It's Pennsylvania, man. It's oh. Pennsylvania. Absolutely. Now, uh, hockey-wise, you're a Leaf fan. You've of obviously course. grown up. Absolutely, uh, grown yeah. Sittler, McDonald. Okay, so, so your favorite Leaf of all time? Yeah, probably Sittler. Sittler? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. You, you, saw, you saw the big night, all the points. Yeah, I saw the big night, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah oh, for sure. <laughs> that was it. Huh? Yeah, yeah. You know, I fell asleep on the green carpet uh, when McDonald scored the goal off Chico Rush there. <laughs> that, that, right? Yeah. It took about yeah. three months later to find the replay because you couldn't find replays. I would have been nope. like 10. Yeah. <laughs> but those, uh, you know. Well, Pete Mahoblich, and, and we've talked to a bunch of guys, including Liam McGuire, but those from the, the, the 72 era. And, uh, but, but Pete Mahoblich said in that 72 series, he scores a goal at Maple Leaf Gardens that still to this day is one of my favorite goals of all time. Yeah, when he goes through everybody. He didn't see that goal for like five years because you just didn't see it. No no one had. I mean, he had to be like Howard Hughes in his weirdo, uh, you know, movie room. There we go. To to have something like that. Don't worry about it. Don't but, worry about but he said, he looked, and he goes, geez, that was really, that was a really good goal. <laughs> I said, yeah, it was. I always remember and, that. And just, you know, we, you, you know, we, I, I t- retweeted that, you know, Liam, you know, Yakushev getting in and, you know, I told him we, my buddy Richard, we sit on the porch every Tuesday. We have a couple of beers, the whole neighborhood. And he's been talking about that for five years. It's the hall of fame. There's, no more famous goal. There's no more famous picture. No. Maybe the Bobby, Bobby Orr. Bobby, Orr, Bobby Orr and Henderson. Those yeah. are the two most iconic pictures in hockey. I've, well, I've got something that probably Dave and I will announce coming up in the month of September. Okay. That deals with exactly what you said on maybe the biggest scale yet. Hmm. There are some plans. There is, There are things in the work. There's a blueprint. Of something coming, okay. the gears uh, are turning. Way. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> that's interesting because you know, too. You know, we talk about, and you know, you played the sports, you lived in this area, you've seen a lot of big magical moments. Depending on your age group, 
I mean, because that, that's sort of the qualifier. I still don't know if I can really relate to anything beyond 72 in terms of, I mean, I was a young kid. I was obviously in elementary school. But that last three games and Paul Henderson, what he did, including, I know, one of the goals was disallowed. He, at that moment for the last three games, literally was the best player on the planet. And he said, maybe I'll never do that again, which I think he probably tell you that he never did. He never did. Do that kind of thing again. But that and that goal, I don't know if I've – it was euphoric. That's the word I'd probably use because I lost my mind in the way in which it happened. It was it was movie-like. I, I, I just missed it. I was, you know, I was four. But I remember my uncle, my older, who lived with us. I always remember him cheering, da, da, Canada, yet, yet, Soviet, yeah. right? That's one right. of my earliest memories from uh, – from hockey, probably from ever. I'm four years old, but that was just uh, it was a magical time. Well, we talk about and yesterday, Dave uh, Jeff Kerbison, who has the book uh, The Hotline, based on uh, right. Paul Hedberg yeah. and, and Nilsson, about those Swedes coming over the time and just how hockey and and let me and I think world hockey is the great. It's led by what we see in the NHL. I mean, everyone in the world wants to play in the best league, but that series. You know, then moving forward, the WHA, the advent of these of these uh, Swedish players coming over, then you know the gates kind of open. It did change the hockey world, which why why I think Dave even yesterday, the first time I ever talked to, to mm. Jeff Gerbison, but that was fantastic yesterday. If you haven't seen the interview, it's 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 on the website, obviously. But that was fascinating. Yeah, it really was. Uh, I'm um I'm a big WHA guy though. That's the thing that uh, you know uh, I, I know in certain markets it wasn't as prevalent just because there was an NHL team like for example here the the Toros were in Toronto for a short time but this is a Maple Leafs town so it didn't you know it didn't have the same impact but the WHA Jets are the reason why there was an NHL jet and then they come back from the dead from Atlanta etc cetera, etc cetera, and you know the rest of the story but the, the foundation is that team and more specifically that line was the reason why there's NHL city, uh, NHL in the smallest one of the well the smallest city in the NHL mm -hmm. out of the teams that are available and one of the smaller cities in North America. It's not supposed to be in a city like Winnipeg. It's it's supposed to be too small. It's supposed to be, it it everybody talks about the Green Bay of the NFL. No, no, it's 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 pretty much smaller when it when you look at tv capacity and everything sure about it is it. So oh it's, yeah uh, it's it's unheard of and you know the beat goes on right passionate fans passionate <laughs> fans and that tends to what uh, what happens when when you have a smaller community i want to play something you never played soccer did you were you a soccer guy oh no baseball because you'd be the world's largest no no yeah. no, no. no you'd be a goalie our family grew up we yeah. you know basically despising soccer oh. so huh? <laughs> okay i did go in the soccer pool yeah. but yeah, uh, yeah, huh? yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we said you gotta watch soccer just yeah, to see yeah. the foolishness <laughs> you know. well here's uh this is this is actually in the in the richards hall of fame this is uh gordon sires his name is from uh scotland and gordon is a very passionate kilmarnock fan this was a bunch of years ago after a loss that he just could not take it also coincided at the same time as the Leafs were tanking to try to be the worst team. And it was interesting how, as the Leaf fans were hoping for a loss each and every game and cheering the fact that they, they, they weren't going to uh, avoid being the basement, this is a, a Killy fan, as they say, who had a different reaction. This is one of the classic Richards Hall of Fame, Kilmarnock fan, Gordon, losing his mind after yet another loss. Right, this is a moment after the day's game video. Fucking Dundee United yesterday. 5 1, we get pumped. The bottom of the league. 10 points, they were on Noor and 13. Fucking hell, man. But credit to Dundee United. Can see their first half display yesterday. It should have been about fucking 7 or 8 nothing. And Simon Murray's goal should have counted. Honestly. Dundee United were brilliant yesterday in the first half. Fantastic football. But we were shite all day. Every fucking one is. Embarrassing. Another early goal we lost. Another yet. That's us. Five against Partick. Five against Dundee United. Four against fucking Hal, eh, Ross County. Four against Dundee. Four against Aberdeen. That's 22 goals and five fucking games! Holy God! 
This is garbage. It's not even junior football. Yes, it's not even amateur football. And every fan will agree with me. He's making no like me. And by the way, see that wee bus journey that stoked off and they made that song? Fucking brilliant. Quality, lads. Fucking quality. A wee bit of banter, because that's what we need. But Gary, come on, son. You can't cut the mustard. You've no go at it. Come on. And use it the board. Get her, get up! Because she's no nothing up at Fumba! Nothing! Because she should have done something! Fucking do something now! Act! Ah, you fucking bastards! So we can assume he's disappointed with the play of his team. Hmm. That made him famous. He ended up going on TV shows. Good looking guy. On radio shows. <laughs> it uh, made him famous. But uh, uh, did, is this a coaching style that you, uh, do, do you have that kind of passion when you coach the kids? Uh, you, you know, you got you know, you, you to bite your tongue a fair <laughs> amount of time. But, you know, hey, you know, passion is great, right? And caring about things, you know, there's, there's always that saying, nobody cares how much you know until you know how much you care. So, you know, if the coaches don't care and they're not putting in the passion and the time, then you can't expect it, uh, you know, to transcend down to the students. Are you are you uh, coaching all sports or is it are you baseball specifically? Uh, I, I, I've done everything. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I've done hockey. I've, I did 26 years of high school football. Right now I'm, uh, I'm currently a ref in football. Oh, 20, are you? Yeah, 25 are you years. Really, of, eh? Oh, yeah. Why? Yeah. Yeah, why, why? Well, actually, you know what? I start. I started doing it just because I, you know, I got a lot of, you know, two of my best buddies, Steve Samara, is a former roommate. He's head coach at uh, Carlton. My buddy Gary Waterman, who I played with at X, is the head coach at X. So I've been uh, guest yeah, coach. Yeah. I've guest coach at both schools. And oh, great! So you know, there's something to be said, eh? For learning. I've refed in the GTHL for five years. Yeah. Right. You know, knowing the rules is a good is a good thing. Yeah. You know, like when they when they're doing this means we got enough people on the field. You know, and Saskatchewan, and when they're tapping the flag, there's too many men. You know yeah. the old "too many men" field goal. Yeah. Like if that happened as I was coaching, I I'd lose my mind. It's the worst. As a, as I'd a, lose my mind as a high school coach. Yeah, it, it, when that flag would come out and you're starting to count, and that's one I'm, of the I'm, greatest I'm, plays ever. And the coaches are going. La Police's <laughs> reaction was the best. Wow. Up in the that's, uh, that's a buddy of his. <laughs> uh, I know, huh? Up in the booth. Oh yeah, like you lose your mind when when that happens in in like junior football. I mean, I couldn't. Uh, I couldn't imagine what it's like in the most important kick oh, of your of of your season. It was just yeah. crazy, and yeah, that was the Rough Riders. No biggie. Uh, you know, yeah. I, I, <laughs> yeah, banjo bowl. I don't know. I don't know if you were ever an MMA guy. I mean, I'd like to see it. More, more of a more of a wrestling guy. More of a wrestling yeah, guy. Oh yeah, yeah. Because there's this guy named Yoshihiro Takayama. Okay. As the in, in Spanish, it was El Titan, the like a giant. The the time. Look at how weird this looks. So I, I don't know if Joe Jurish would, would would necessarily look like this in the ring, but uh, property of whatever this is, he'd be taller than him. Uh, this is a very strange looking fight. I'm sure normally the guy in the green trunks probably a very intimidating guy, probably ripped. Probably you'd, you'd walk down the street and go, "Don't bother that guy," unless of course you have to fight this Japanese giant. <laughs> Look at this. He doesn't even move. He didn't even... Oh, yeah. No. It's nice they added the sound effects, too. Oh, yeah. Oh. He just walks away. Wow. The the knee to the head from a giant. Here it comes. Oh, there's a the sound effect. <laughs> what do you think, Joe? Could it make a new career for you? Yeah. <laughs> that's why I went, that's why I went to elementary school. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks so much for coming in today. I said your uh, support of us is uh, is fantastic. I mean, we're uh, we started tiny. It's not that tiny anymore, to be honest. But it uh, it uh, it 
it's nice to involve community, as I said, you know, being from a family of, of coaches and, and teachers. You know, I, I could just tell, you know, the, the, you know, from, from even like tweets, but there was this understanding kind of what we do. Um, you know, as, as much as we fool around, I've always been told by guys who, you know, were in the show in different sports that, yeah, but there's still, you still have this think of the locker room. Like there's still, you have an understanding that if you were on behind a bench or, or on the, on the sidelines or on the side of the court, that you would probably know what you were doing, which is what my upbringing was. And when I uh, heard from you and, and of course with your connection of Warren Sock, you is, uh, or Sluggo, who is really one of my all-time favorite guys? Wow. He's, he is just a super individual. You know, that's that's the most important thing. You guys, and you know, you reached out. You do the you do the shows for the young people, and you know, or for you know, for the the communities and 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 the good the good the good stories, right? You know, with yeah. all you do for epilepsy and everything, and that's that's the most. That's definitely the most important thing, yeah. right? You taking advantage of your position to do good things. I'd like to do a quick shout out. My dad's 78th birthday today. Oh, so absolutely! Hey, happy Better today, say that today. Uh, today ah, yeah, so they'll be watching probably at some point in time. Awesome. So. Now, now that I stopped sweating like a fiend, holy moly, came in here. Well, just you did sprint from Union Station. Yeah, it's a little I bit did. of a hike. What you say? But, but like I said, you guys do a great job, and uh, we're doing all we can to spread the word. Well, that's Thanks, awesome. Buddy. And, Thanks so much for coming in. It was outstanding. Sure. Looking and, forward uh, to the next hockey pool. Yeah. That, yeah. <laughs> Just become best friends. Yep. <laughs> <laughs>